Hey guys, I'm back with another video and I'm really excited to film this one because today is my one year curl anniversary. Yay! <laughs> I have now been doing and learning about the curly girl method for a year now. And I thought it would be really fun to do a year in review type video for you guys to just tell you everything I've learned over the past 365 days. So if you're interested to hear about my curly girl journey, then just keep watching. All right, so for those of you who are brand new to the curly girl method and just clicked on this video, um, took some notes. <laughs> and I'm gonna explain what the curly girl method is very quickly. I can do a more in-depth video if you'd like, but basically the curly girl method is a hair care routine that increases the health of your hair. And it was developed by Lorraine Massey, and she has a book called The Curly Girl Handbook. Yes, pick it up on Amazon. I believe the Kindle version is just like a couple of bucks. It's totally worth a read. I like having a hard copy. Um, and it explains a better way to care for your hair. And especially curly hair because curly hair tends to be drier and more prone to damage than any other type of hair texture. Um, so the curly girl method, basically you cut out shampoos with uh, very harsh ingredients. You cut out conditioners with silicones in them. Heck, you cut out everything with silicones in it. Uh, drying alcohols, you don't heat style your hair anymore. So no curling irons, no flat irons. You can use your blow dryer but it had better be on, on cool, not high. And uh, no terry cloth towel. You use a t-shirt to dry your hair or um, special towels that won't damage your hair. And you protect your hair when you sleep at night. So doing all of these things for a year has totally transformed my hair. And let me explain why I even started doing this because this is kind of a random thing for me to find and start doing. So when I was very, very little, I'll insert her picture here, I had very cute little cherub curls. I was very blonde and my hair was very curly. As I got a little bit older, my hair went really, really straight, like pin straight. And then come oh. along to that special time in every girl's life right around 13 my hair went wonky. It was no longer pinned straight and it was no not curly. So I didn't know what to do with it. And I just started blow drying it straight and curling it with a curling iron. I did that for 10 years or so until I was in college. And in college, I decided to be wild and crazy and I chopped all my hair off and I quit blow drying it and I washed it at night and slept on it wet. And I would actually wake up in the morning with ringlets around my face and throughout my whole hair and it was gorgeous. And I rocked that wavy curly look and I was like, this is awesome. Looking back uh, after chopping off all my hair, I cut off a lot of weight. I also cut off a lot of uh, coloring. I had been growing out the color of my hair for a long time. So I basically cut my hair to virgin hair and then quit heat styling and my natural texture came out in college. But I didn't know that. <laughs> and I went back to coloring my hair and blow drying my hair and all those beautiful little curls went away. So, so fast forward to now, I was at work a year ago and a coworker whose hair was always perfectly straight, round brushed, blow dried out, came into work one day and she had gorgeous, gigantic ringlets all over her head. And I was like, oh my gosh, your hair's so pretty today. How did you do that? Did you do that with a curling iron? <laughs> she laughed at me and said, no, my hair is naturally curly and I've learned how to take care of it doing the curly girl method. And I mean, guys, this was like, an overnight tra transformation. I saw her on Tuesday and then Thursday she had great curls. Like her hair responded really well and beautiful. So I was like, great, cool. Tell me about the Curly Girl Method. And she gave me her copy of the Curly Girl Method to read and I read it and gave it back. 
purchased my own <laughs> and I was intrigued because I knew that my hair had been curly when I was a little girl. I knew it had been kind of curly during college. And when I read the book, I realized, oh, that's probably why it, it curled up because I, I cut off a bunch of damage and I quit blow drying it. Um, and the last reason I started doing the curly girl method was actually for my baby sister. This beautiful girl has serious frizz. And she, no matter what she does, it just isn't tamed. There was no frizz serum, there was no frizz free shampoo, conditioner, nothing would tame this girl's frizz. If, and I know that sounds terrible. I love her so much. She's so pretty. And I thought, okay, I know her. She's the kind of girl who's very, very minimalistic. She's not real big into intensive beauty regimens. And I thought, okay, if I can simplify her hair care routine, curly girl method isn't simple, but if we could simplify her hair routine and make her hair look less frizzy in the process, that would be great. So I dove in head first into the curly girl method and oh my gosh, I didn't come up for air for like two months. <laughs> there is so much information out there and resources that really helped me were real life curly girl here on YouTube and the vast wide wonderful world of curly girl Instagram. And if you are interested in checking out curly girl Instagram, I'll have my Instagram link down below and then you can go out into that sea uh, from there. But those are the reasons that I started the curly girl method. And I'll insert a picture or two right here of what my hair looked like right before I started doing the curly girl method. It was fairly long and I blow fried it straight every single day. I was great at blow drying it with a round brush and making it be pin straight. Now, I, my favorite shampoo of all time before doing curly girl was the Biolage Clean Slate, no, the Biolage Clean Reset Shampoo and their Hydra Source Conditioning Balm. And I would use those two. I always left my conditioning balm on for forever when I was in the bathtub or shower. Um, and then rinse that all out. And then the very next thing I would have to do in order to be able to brush out my hair, I had to load my hair up with Fructis Sleek and Shine Serum. I mean like four pumps of this stuff. Like gigantic handful of silicone serum. You read the ingredients. I think the first one is like maybe water, maybe not. I don't even remember, but like the second ingredient is dimethicone. And I actually looked for that. I would look for dimethicone serums to put in my hair because I knew that that would make it so that I could get a brush through it. If not, it would snarl and tangle and mat and I would not be able to get a brush through it. So that's where I started the curly girl method decently long hair, so many years of silicone buildup on my hair that it wasn't even funny. So when I started my curly girl journey, I read in the handbook that you have to do something called a final wash. And what that is, is a wash with a sulfate heavy shampoo with no silicones and no drying alcohols in it. Strangely enough, some shampoos have silicones and drying alcohols in them. So. After doing lots of research, I found that Suave Daily Clarifying Shampoo is perfect for your final wash because it has a sulfate in it. It's not the harshest sulfate there is, but it will remove all past silicone buildup. Then, right after you do your sulfate wash, you must deep condition, and that is your final wash. Theoretically, you have pulled all the silicones off your hair, all the drying alcohols, all the buildup, and you're ready to start with a clean slate. So the deep conditioner that I first used was actually Biolage Hydrosource Deep Treatment or, or Conditioning Mask. That is a Curly Girl approved deep conditioner. And it was something I was already using, so it was great. And I started learning to deep condition with heat and so on and so forth. But I went back and I looked at all my Amazon purchases and some of the very first things I purchased for my Curly Girl journey were the As I Am Coconut Co-Wash, their leave-in conditioner, which 
Oh, I still love those so much today. I also bought uh, a little trial kit of Diva Curl products. It was their Low Poo. So it did suds up. It wasn't their No Poo. It was their Low Poo, their One Condition, their Light Defining Gel, and their, their cream. My hair hated, hated that stuff. <laughs> so I gave it to my sister and she actually had a really bad reaction to the Diva Curl products. So I'm hesitant to retry those. So bought the Diva Curl products early on in my Curly Girl journey. Bought the Coconut Co-Wash, which is fabulous. Bought the LA Looks Gel <laughs> from Walmart that's like $1.97 that's this big. Uh, I've used it in previous videos on my YouTube channel, but oh my gosh, that stuff builds up on my hair. Let's see. Ah, and then early on in my curly girl journey, so I think like two weeks in, I bought the entire mop top line. And guys, I think it's due to mop top that I kept doing this for so long. Mop top is a fabulous formulation for my hair type, which is wavy, fine, high porosity hair that needs good moisture protein balance. And I bought their gentle shampoo, I bought their daily conditioner, their custard, and their medium hold gel. And man, I use those things for a really long time. <laughs> I also got uh, the Uncle Funky's Daughter Curly Magic Curl Stimulator. That was an absolutely fabulous curl enhancer for me. I also got into the Jessie Curl products, which are very, very nice. But anyway, needless to say, I jumped off into the product junkie end of the pool and swam around in there for a while. <laughs> but it was really nice because I think in the beginning, I tried a lot of different things and learned what worked for my hair and what I liked and learned what I didn't like. and. Sometimes that happens. I was luckily very smart about my purchases and I was able to return 90% of the things that didn't work for me and uh, give away the rest. So when you're making your purchases, it's okay. I, I don't condone being a product junkie, like, but I understand needing to buy a bunch of different products and try them to see if they work for you. If you do that, I do highly recommend that you document very carefully exactly what you did and what products you used and the amounts. So take a picture, write down what you did for that photo <laughs> because you may just be in a bad mood that day and think your hair looks like crap when, you know, and, and you think it's the product's fault, but when in reality you were just in a bad mood and you look back at the picture a week later and you're like, oh dude, my hair was good that day and I kind of like that product. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. <laughs> so documentation is very helpful in this journey. Also, you will realize that you may be thinking you're having an absolutely horrendous hair day and you look back like a month ago at your hair picture and you go, oh my gosh, this is my best ever wash day. And you hold it up to your hair that day and it looks awful. Like your best ever wash day looks awful next to your average day hair later. Okay, done with documentation rant. When I started my journey, I fully expected my hair to bounce up immediately and to curl up and to be the ringlets that it was when I was in college and when I was younger, and it didn't. <laughs> it really didn't. And so I, when I started the journey, you can see in those pictures that there's a very strong line of demarcation where my hair had been colored where it had been highlighted it was very damaged um there had been an incident where i went into a salon to have some color correcting done because the blonde had current turned pretty orange and the lady who tried to color correct it put darker ha hair dye on my hair and my hair soaked it up and my hair turned black <laughs> in places. So to remove some of the hair dye, she took baking soda and rubbed my hair with baking soda to lift the color out. It was so bad. I left the salon crying. I, I had a broom on my head and couldn't get a brush through my hair for weeks. Um, 
But anyway, that, that's why I let the color grow out so far. There, I was not gonna let anybody put any more color on my hair because <laughs> ugh, bad experiences. So I kept trying to revive that extremely damaged section of my hair and it just, it wasn't happening. <laughs> And I said to myself, fine, I'm gonna do a big chop and then my hair is gonna spring up magically and be super, super curly. So I chopped my hair off to my ears. And as you can see from this picture right here, it did not spring up magically, but at this point I had nearly virgin hair. This was a clean slate for me, almost. There's like one straggler that's still blonde. So let me talk about some things that I have learned in the year I have been doing the curly girl method. First off, I have learned that my hair is fine texture. Each individual strand is very, very small in diameter. I have learned that I have high density hair, which means I have a lot of it. You can't see much of my scalp when I part my hair. And when I have a ponytail, there's like that much of the ponytail. Um, so I have a lot of hair that is very fine. I also have high porosity hair. Now, there is a misconception about high porosity hair, that high porosity hair equals damaged hair. That is not the case. You can have high porosity hair that is not damaged. What it means to have high porosity hair is that your cuticle is not tightly, tightly, tightly closed and water can easily penetrate into your hair. So when I wet my hair in the bathtub, it takes on the water fairly quickly. Low, low porosity hair almost repels water. You get it wet and it like beads up and runs off of it. However, the reason that there is the misconception that high porosity hair is damaged is that all damaged hair is high porosity because the cuticle had, no, yes, because the cuticle has been damaged in some way or destroyed altogether. And ways you can damage the cuticle are relaxers, perms, heat styling, coloring, bleaching. All these things can disrupt the cuticle, which will leave the cortex exposed to lose water and leave your hair more prone to breakage but you can have high porosity hair that is not damaged. So for the longest time, I thought, okay, I've chopped off all my hair. I'm using products that are good for it. I don't have low, I don't have high porosity hair because my hair is not damaged. I have low porosity hair. So I was using a bunch of low porosity products and it didn't work for me. It's because my hair is high porosity and not necessarily damaged. Okay, I hope that cleared something up for some of y'all. It's just the speed at which your hair takes up water. It's not how damaged it is and how not damaged it is. Another thing I've learned in the year of doing the curly girl method is that my hair lasts longer and I prefer the way it looks when I diffuse it. And I, that's a big learning curve in and of itself too. Learning how to diffuse your hair. I mean, I was awesome at round brushing it and blowing it dry, but to like learn how to diffuse it was a giant learning curve. And the longer I do this, the better I get at diffusing it. My favorite diffusing technique so far is the one I demonstrate in my last video. It's what works the best. Um, I find that when I don't diffuse, the weight of the water just weighs down my hair and that is because it is so, so fine and it is not extremely curly like I thought it was. <laughs> it's, it's wavy, but it's not the coils that I had when I was little. I've also discovered that I, every once in a while, need to use a sulfate <gasps> gasp. That means that I have not been strictly curly girl for a year. I have been doing a modified version of the curly girl method. And the reason that I go ahead and I use a sulfate every once in a while is that there are certain ingredients and certain gels that build up in your hair over time. And the most effective and easy way to remove those are with a sulfate. For those of you who are extremely curious, they are polyquaternions. And it's not all polyquaternions that build up, but um, anyway, if y'all are more interested in that, I can try and explain it, but Google 
is what I where I learned all this information. So you you it, it would serve you to Google it, but <laughs> anyway, I'll I'll talk about it if you want. But I'm no expert. I just I'm a Google spurt Google expert. The last thing I learned in the year that I did the curly girl method is that the curly girl method won't make your hair curly. <laughs> You can try all you want to get those glorious 3B curls that we're all hoping for. And it's not the styling products that are gonna give it to you. It's not the cut that's gonna give it to you. It's not the way you diffuse your hair or finger coil it that's going to give you those curls. If those curls aren't naturally yours, then you don't get them. <laughs> And I thought for the longest time that my hair was going to curl up and be perfect little corkscrews like this gorgeous girl on the front of the cover. And it's just not. That is not my hair texture. And here's the craziest part about the curly girl journey. It is so much more than just about hair. <laughs> You spend so much time learning how to care for your hair that in the process you start to care for yourself and you accept your hair in its natural state and something with that acceptance of your hair turns into a much deeper level of self-acceptance. For me, I realized that I was worthy, that I was beautiful just the way God created me and that I am enough. <laughs> in my barely wavy state, I am enough. This is the way I am made. So that has been the biggest transformation for me along the curly girl journey. There are other benefits that I have noticed in my hair over this past year. It's much shinier. It tangles way less. I can wash it less often. I used to have to wash my hair every day or use half a bottle of dry shampoo. And now I can go three days without doing much to my hair and it look like I curled it. Like my hair would not have been this curled up looking with a curling iron before doing the curly girl journey. Like this just blows my mind. But having accepted that my hair is not gonna curl up anymore than it is now, and that my hair is healthy, this is exactly how I was created, and it is beautiful and it is enough. I have accepted my hair in its natural state and somehow that has turned into me accepting me exactly the way I am. And I'm really, really grateful to my coworker who walked into class a year ago and said, hey, I'm doing the curly girl method. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, um, share it, do whatever you gotta do. <laughs> uh, subscribe if you haven't already and come hang out with me while I talk about my hair and the weird experiments that I do on my hair um, <laughs> on this channel. And let me know if you have any questions or ideas for other videos. I hope y'all had an absolutely wonderful day and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.